Do you know what your strengths are? And are you truly living a life based upon what you're truly strong at? Now, I've been reading this book by Peter Drucker called Managing Oneself, and he puts out the statement of, he believes that the vast majority of people think they know what their strengths are, but truly do not know what their strengths are. Now, I ask this question, do you know what your strengths are? Now, if you're wondering how to figure out what your strengths are and how to work on improving your strengths, stay tuned and we'll chat more about figuring out your strengths. Hey, what's going on? Just think of me as your big brother or the modern mystic. My name is Eric and I'm here to help you find freedom and abundance. And I wanna ask you one question. Do you know what your strengths are in life? And are you truly living a life revolving around what you're truly good at? That's a really good question. Pop your questions or pop your comments in the comment section below. I would love to hear your perspective on what your strengths are. Now, I've been reading this great book called Managing Oneself and it's like there's eight chapters on how to live a life that's truly of fulfillment and truly of your highest potential. And I find that the vast majority of folks I've worked with in the accounting and tax space or in the business consulting space are not truly living a life that's out to their true potential. So in this methodology, the first question is asked is number one is what are your strengths and how do you play into your strengths? So for me, you know, I've been in this amazing journey of entrepreneurship, trying to figure things out over the last now 42 years. I'm 42 years old at this point, at the point of making this video. And what I've realized is for a large chunk of my life, I haven't been playing or working with my strengths. Now I believed in the story that I've been telling myself is one of my strengths is hard work. And there's nothing wrong with hard work, right? Sometimes you need to do hard work to make things happen. But I was ingrained and indoctrinate the belief that the way to get ahead was to work 80 hours a week and forget everything else. And I thought that was a strength and that's what I was doing for a number of years. And what ended up happening was I became less present with my son, less present with my relationships, even less present with my life. And this notion of grinding it out and that being my strength of this, like, this discipline truly really wasn't my strength until I used something called a feedback analysis loop. Now feedback analysis loop was basically what I did is every time a big decision was to happen or a big action was to take place, I would either mentally note or write down in my journal what I believe the result to be. And I would just do that over a period of 30 days. So I invite you to get a journal and write down every time you have to make a big decision or anytime you do a large type of thing, write down what it is and what you expect or anticipate the result to be. And look at your writings, your journaling for a 30 day period. And from there, you might be able to see what you're truly good at. I thought I was really good at working hard and that's something that I can do and that I've grinded myself out with. But what I've realized is what I was truly good at is building relationships, bringing people together. I'm truly good at mentoring and guiding and holding space for others to allow them to heal and grow as an individual and as a business owner. And all of this came to me from analyzing this feedback loop. What do you do with this new knowledge of figuring out what you're good at? What I invite you to do is after figuring it out is improve upon your strengths. And now Gary Vaynerchuk, who's a luminary in the entrepreneurial world, his big thing is called self-awareness. And one of the things he preaches all the time is double down on your strengths and higher up for your weaknesses. Now, a lot of entrepreneurs, myself included, for years, what I would do is I would try to do everything because it's a way of saving money or it's a way of like just getting things done. But the problem was by doing everything, I would be doing certain things that I'm strong at and a lot of things that I'm weak at. My business would either struggle or I'd be stressed out or what have you. And this concept is called delegation. But until you know what you're really good at and what you're not good at, you really can't delegate. So I invite you once you do that feedback loop of journaling and figure out what you're really good at is to start doubling down on your strengths. Focus on improving what you're truly good at and become the best of that as you can and understand what your weaknesses are. I mean, weaknesses, just the name of it sounds negative, right? But weaknesses are a key identifier of things that you can possibly have other people do or things that you can tell other folks, hey, I'm not that great at that, but I'm great at this. Let me play into this. And then if you can, can you take over this side of things, right? And that would truly allow you to play in what your core strengths are. The one thing I've come to realize is that a lot of folks are working jobs or businesses that truly do not make them happy. And the reason for that is, although they have a piece of it where they're working in their what we call sphere of genius or their state of flow, they're also doing a lot of stuff that they just really do not like and they do not like it because honestly they're not good at it 
right? So figure out how to delegate those things out. And that'll be super helpful. Once you figure out what you can hire for or delegate out or what you can focus on, it's time to start figuring out what your bad habits are. And your bad habits, honestly, are probably you doing things that you're not that great at. Maybe it's procrastination. Maybe it's a coping mechanism of delaying or avoidance, or maybe this bad habit of moving away from situations that might be uncomfortable, right? Identify what these bad habits are and then reframe the story in your head of saying, okay, although this might be a bad habit, I'm going to avoid this challenge next time, or I'm going to avoid this doing the same like methodology next time of procrastinating or whatever. Once you identify that, then you could start making those, those shifts inside of your mind, right? So when it comes down to it, I would love to pose this question with you once again. Do you know what your strengths are? If so, comment in the comment section below. Once you identify your strengths through a feedback analysis loop, journal this over next 30 days, the next thing to do is focus on what your strengths are. Improve upon those strengths, double down on the strengths, but then also figure out on the weaknesses side, can you delegate that? Can you hire somebody to help you with that? Or can you tell your team members at your place of work, hey, these are what I'm really good at and I'm gonna focus on it. Can you help me with this thing? because these are things that I'm not great at. Finally, once you've been able to delegate that out is to eliminate your bad habits. And I almost can guarantee you that by doing this process for a 30 to 60 day time frame, you're gonna change your life. Again, we're talking about this book called Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker. I'm gonna put a link for it in the comment section below or in the, the bio or the description box of this video. Highly invite you to, to pick it up and read through it. It's a short read, it's like 55 pages and it will change your life. So again, my name is Eric. I like to call myself the modern mystic. I'm here to help you find freedom and abundance. Now, if you're new here to the channel, I make new videos once a week or twice a week, and I would love to hear from you. Pop them in the comment section below, smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again next week. Take care, peace.